First of all, I would like to thank the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, for putting on such a great event for St. George's Day. It's a pleasure to be here. I don't always get walked onto stage by a glamorous assistant, by the way. I just noticed that the bloke over there looks like a benefit fraud inspector. So I'm trying to look as disabled as possible. This is also the reason why I won't be ending the show with my usual song and dance routine. As you may be able to tell, I'm a struggling stand-up comedian who also struggles to stand up. To be honest, I'm not sure which I am worst at. I'll leave that for you to decide. But, just so you know, if you don't laugh at the disabled guy, you are going to hell. If you are wondering how I got disabled, it's because I didn't forward that chain email to ten of my closest friends when I was younger. It's nice to be here in. Insert the name of your town or city here. In fact, it's much nicer than being in. Insert the name of a rubbish local town here. We are just an advanced breed of monkeys on a minor planet of a very average star. But we can understand the universe. That makes us something very special. Sorry, I think I picked up the wrong iPad. That was from last night, when I was performing as a Stephen Hawking tribute act. <laughs> it's nice to be here on this Monday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon. Sorry. The days are arranged in order. I'll get there eventually. Wednesday afternoon. Thursday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Saturday afternoon. May afternoon. <laughs> Damn technology. I knew I should have bought a Commodore 64 instead. Anyway, let's continue. Let me tell you, you get asked some really strange questions when you are disabled though. My disability is called cerebral palsy. Recently I was asked what sort of cerebral palsy I had. I wasn't even aware that there was different brands of it. I have definitely not got any designer brand of cerebral palsy. I think I picked mine up from Wilkinson's. Whenever I'm asked what sort of cerebral palsy I have, I always want to say I've got the bad kind. I don't know what they expect me to say. Next, they will be asking me to rate my cerebral palsy on a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being really bad, and 1 being a benefit cheat appearing on the Jeremy Kyle show. I have been called many different names in the past. Just last week someone called me physically challenged, which I always thought was a game on Crystal Maze. Of course, other names have not been as nice. In fact, I am sick of getting pointed at, laughed at, looked at strangely, treated as if I am stupid and called names just because I am different. It's not even my fault that I'm from Newcastle. <laughs> Another question that I get asked quite often is, have I ever tried to talk just to see what would happen? As if I had just been lazy all of my life and therefore just couldn't be bothered to talk. Like I was only putting it on to take advantage of the disabled parking. But, in case you are wondering, no I haven't tried to talk before. 
mainly because I know nothing would happen. Besides, I built a career out of not being able to speak now. I don't think I should be encouraging my voice to magically reappear too much. The found voice guy just doesn't have the same ring to it. I do actually talk in my sleep though. I know I do because I always wake up with random sentences typed out on my iPad. <laughs> Admittedly, this job would be so much easier if I could talk. Because apparently it's very important to get your tone of voice right when doing comedy. So that means I'm completely screwed. For example, this is what I sound like when I'm excited. And this is what I sound like when I'm miserable. And this is what I sound like when I'm happy. And this is what I sound like when I'm bored. In fact, the only time I sound any different is on Tuesday nights, when I pretend to be a woman. It's at this point in my set, when I like to remind people that I'm not related to Stephen Hawking in any way. However, I was asked by a taxi driver if I was as clever as him once. I'm clearly not as clever as him or I wouldn't be in this generic town or city, talking a load of rubbish. In fact, the closest I have ever come to being Hawking is when I went to see The Theory of Everything, at the cinema. It's a movie about Stephen Hawking and his life. I didn't go to watch it though. I just went so that I could sit at the back, say random sentences on my iPad, and mess with the rest of the audience. Hawking would say something on screen, and then I would speak up at the back, and exclaim that I didn't say that at all. And that the movie was putting words into my machine. One guy in front of me seemed to be really impressed that it was being shown in surround sound. I often get asked if I am out with my carer as well. I really wish people would stop thinking that the people I am out with must be my carers. Because obviously disabled people couldn't just be out with friends. That would just be stupid. Just to put the record straight, I have always been very social and have a lot of mates. I had some great friends at school. I think it's rather different when you attend a school for disabled people compared to a mainstream school. In mainstream schools, it is the fittest and most attractive children who are most popular. But it wasn't like that for me. At my school, you were judged on how bad your disability was. If there wasn't that much wrong with you, then you were bullied for being too normal. And let me tell you, you don't want to be on the receiving end of an electric wheelchair. It's hard for me to sing repetitive songs, too. When I join in, it just sounds like my computer's glitching. For example, listen to what happens when I try to sing a bit of Kylie. I just can't get you out of my head, boy, your loving is all I think about. I just can't get you out of my head, boy, it's more than I dare to think about. La 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 You're laughing now, but that was very close to being the rest of the show. Seeing how much you laughed at that, I just realized I didn't need to work so hard writing jokes. 
I could have just come up here and tried to sing. Is this the way to Amarillo for you? Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. Having this voice makes it really awkward speaking on the phone as well. One thing that I don't like is when you ring your bank and it gets answered by an automated machine. I'm not sure if that happens to everyone or if it's just my bank taking the mic. The voice on the phone sounds exactly like my own voice too. I call up to talk to my bank and end up having a family reunion. <laughs> So, it's like I'm having a conversation with myself about my current financial situation. And trust me, I don't need the bank to remind me. I wasted all my Britain's Got Talent winnings on bags of giant chocolate buttons. I talk to myself anyway. Sometimes I even have two iPads set up with different voices on them, and I start arguments with myself. The worst thing is that the phone voice can't even understand what my actual voice is saying. So I'm always getting thrown back to the first menu, no matter how far I get along in the process. Even when I do get past the menu system and get to speak to an actual person, my iPad enjoys messing my life up. For example, when they ask for my credit card number, my iPad will always read it out as one long number, which is pretty useless. But if you're wondering, my credit card number is 445,542,455,342. This means that I have to type out each number individually instead, which is a pain in the bum. I'm fairly sure that both myself and the person on the other end of the phone are losing their will to live at this point. And if my call is being recorded for training purposes, I feel sorry for all the people being forced to sit through that training session. I mean, what are they supposed to learn from that? The fact that you should never engage in a conversation with a bloke who sounds like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. <laughs> a similar thing happens when I want to order concert tickets over the phone. Especially if it's for someone like Kane West. Sorry, I mean Kane West. Khan West. Oh, so did, Mr. West. As you can see, it's not easy to get my talker to pronounce his name correctly. In the end, I usually just give up. And that's why I've seen Little Mix in concert 124 times. Thanks to technology, I haven't missed my voice that much though. But I never used to have an iPad to speak with. In the olden days, I used to talk using a calculator. Sadly, I could only say a few words on it. Which is why all my pets were called boobies. As much as I enjoy technology though, I do worry that Google is taking the mick out of me because it keeps asking me if I want my cookies to be disabled. <laughs> I know quite a lot of sign language as well. I actually hired a sign language interpreter for this show, but she hasn't turned up yet. So I apologize to the deaf people in the audience. For now, you'll just have to read my lips. <laughs> But, it's this sort of attitude that has taught me to always stand up for what I believe in. Even if I stand quite wonky. In fact, people are often asking me why I always lean to the left 
when I got the train onto the gig today. I always like to sit in those seats for disabled people. It's just easier to get off. Anyway, I was in that seat and was about halfway here when another disabled person got on and asked me to move. I'll be honest, I didn't realize I'd be playing disabled, top, trunks when I got on or I would have dressed more special. Needless to say I didn't move. Who cares if he was both blind and deaf? I was there first. It was very awkward. He couldn't see that I was still there. And I couldn't tell him I wasn't moving because I can't speak. In the end I had to throw his guide dog a stick. I decided to get a taxi to the venue. I checked beforehand and it didn't look that far. I thought I could easily afford it. The taxi driver had other ideas however. I think he must have seen me coming and decided that I must be thick as well as disabled. This was confirmed when he started shouting every word slowly at me. I could have told him to stop, but to be honest, it was very amusing. Especially as I still couldn't understand his accent. Anyway, I ended up taking the longest taxi ride I've ever taken. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, it cost an absolute fortune. Maybe it didn't help that I was confusing the taxi driver by pretending to be the Tom Tom. After 200 yards bare left. Well done. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Or is it the third? I can never remember since they did those roadworks. Maybe it's the first exit. Yes. It's definitely the first exit. Take the first exit. Sorry. It was the second exit. Why didn't you say something? You completed it. Never mind, I know a shortcut. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Take the bridge over troubled water, winding your way down on Baker Street. You're on the road to hell. Stop. Hammer time. Let's face it, being a comedian, when you can't even speak, is a pretty messed up idea, as well. Just imagine how rubbish I must be at everything else if this was my most viable option. That's like James Corden wanting to be a television presenter. But I haven't always wanted to do stand-up comedy. In fact, I was a bit of the SWAT when I was younger. And my dad always used to tell me off for having an answer for everything. But that was why my nickname at school was automated response. The fact is that, I just had the world's worst careers guidance counselor while I was at school. I know this is true, because he also got me work experience as a disc jockey for local radio. I spent two weeks working as the bloke who rings people and tries to steal their bank details. <laughs> And, he got me a Saturday job, in Marks and Spencer. I was the voice in the lift. Not everyone at my school was useless though. I had this great English teacher, who always pushed me to follow my dreams. So I was also a poet, when I was younger. 
and I've kept all my poems to this day. I'll read you some of my best work. Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a great poet, L404, rhyme not found. However, using a communication aid, gave me some advantages at school. Obviously, it did make puberty slightly easier, at that time when every boy's voice drops. Luckily for me, I could just go into my settings, and change it to, older bloke. Which was much better, than having to sound like this. But I think I've always tried to work hard, and do my best, at everything I do. I was definitely inspired to be ambitious by my parents, who had amazing jobs as well. My mum was a nurse. She was the Florence Nightingale, of her day. Then I came along, and we became Florence and the Machine. <laughs> I want to be a TV host. Originally I wanted to do the chase. But it wouldn't take people long to catch me. Then I wanted to be a presenter, on catchphrase. But I'd never be able to say, what I see. So, I decided I want to host, Saturday Night Takeaway. I think I'd fit in perfectly, because they already have two Geordies, who struggle to talk properly. As a disabled person, I don't get asked to go on as many TV shows, as I would like. It was nice to see Rose, win Strictly come dancing, though. That was good for the disabled community. I don't think they'd ask me to do that. It would look more like total wipeout. And I can't go on I'm a celebrity, because I struggled to swallow lasagna, so I don't think I could handle eating kangaroo brain. I have lived in Newcastle all my life, but for some reason, I still haven't picked up the accent. <laughs> However, if you are trying to place my accent, it's from PC.